Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster the, the, who really, uh, I think the sound of the TARDIS is, is a very soothing sound. Uh, but I would say I'm a little bit like uh, a little bit easier to sleep to than the sound of a TARDIS. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, uh, that's okay. I'm just here to uh, put you to sleep and keep you company because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And if you're a regular listener, I can, can, I, can, I, can I just please share your attention for a few minutes before you fall asleep and remind you when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors, because these are the ways we're able to keep this podcast free for everybody. Uh, hey, if you checked out our merch store lately, because we got some sweet stuff in there and listeners are loving, everyone is buying that Bella flowy tank uh, for, for the spring and the summer. Uh, our lounge pants, our sleep pants are selling really well. Uh, we're going to be adding uh, some new stuff to the store this spring. Uh, but we've got the sleep spray, custom sleep phones, some beautiful shirts, some beautiful prints, and you can get it all at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Uh, so get over there, support the show, rock your merchandise, share the pics with me so I can say thanks. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Thanks. Uh, sleepy supporter zone time, time to celebrate the podcast, the people who keep the podcast free for everybody by supporting the sponsors. I want to thank Candy, who not only got a Quip toothbrush, also got a new planner. The, the Quip is the sponsor, uh, getquip.com slash sleep. I also want to thank Luke, who supported Green Chef. Uh, Luke went to greenchef.us slash sleep75 and got $25 off uh, Luke's first three boxes of Green Chef. Greenchef.us slash sleep75. Thank you both for supporting the sponsors. And here to celebrate in the Sleepy Supporter Zone, now on with your Sleepy Podcast. Oh, Mr. Bard, you know, you, I know you work really hard uh, strumming, you know, singing and strumming along. Uh, but who else works out, uh, help, helps out on this show? Who, you know, who helps me pronounce my word? No, oh, I, okay. Thanks, Mr. Chris Bard. Posty poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Bad is down or on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at. Could be for Father's Day, which is coming up soon. Or could be just to say, hey, you're cool. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your moderators. Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find it. Thank you, Mr. Bard. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, remember uh, to uh, check out our newsletter, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash newsletter. It'll just give you occasional updates about the show, live shows, stuff like that. And uh, I think that's it. What do you say we get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. Uh, What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations, changes in time and temperature, uh, routine, you know, whatever it is. If you have something you're thinking about, something you're experiencing or physically dealing with, uh, I'd like to take your mind off of that and keep you company. It'd be near your bedside, at your bedside, across the room. It could be like it would, like you're, we could be, this is imaginary, but we could be best friends. I could be on one of those tin cans, uh, you know, going across, uh, it maybe actually maybe that's something people don't know about anymore, and that it was mostly in the movies, from my memory.
So maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, uh, other, you know, things, t- t- TBD to things to be decided. Like when I think of them, I say, well, you got to put some words in there, scoots. Uh, WTBS, words to be spoken. So, uh, but basically, I'm here to goof around and keep you company. If you're new, here's a couple of things. This show's silly uh, and a little bit goofy and very different. So, give it a few tries, kind of see how it goes. If you can, just kind of uh, view, view the first couple of listens as a passive observer. Ideally, you'll fall asleep. Uh, Maybe uh, I'll put you in a better mood. Uh, but yeah, just kind of see how it goes. Structurally, what to expect. The show starts off with a few minutes of business. That's how we keep it free. Then there's an intro. The intros are around 12 or 15 minutes. And it mostly consists of like helping you ease you into bedtime by me t- spending a 12 to 15 minutes trying to come up with a metaphor of what the podcast is. And I haven't been able to successfully do that in a concise way in 750 uh, plus episodes. Uh, but yeah, like you, you could listen to it and, and, and ideally it helps uh, get you comfortable. You know, some people fall asleep during it. A few people skip ahead about 18 minutes or so and just go straight for uh, the discussion portion of the show. Tonight we'll be talking about Doctor Who, uh, season two, episode uh, a, like uh, 10 or 10. 11, depending on technicalities. Uh, But if you say, well, I don't watch that show, or, oh, I don't want to be spoiled, or doesn't that show contain, uh, isn't Doctor Who like a traveler? Is it the same Doctor Who with a scarf? No scarf on this one. Good question. That's a very good question. Uh, But no, it's kind of like, I'll look at the episode. This one actually has a low, this is a very fun episode. It does have low Doctor Who and Rose content, uh, but it was still, it, it has a full arc. Uh, and the first third of the story is, uh, it, it's really a heartfelt story from beginning to end. But you you wouldn't know it listening to me talk about it because I'll mostly be talking about uh, Jeff Lynn, ELO, the things in the background. I say, what is that in the background of that dude's room? Elton is his name. Here's something I do, I don't think I'll talk about, but I do wonder where, like who where who who like does Elton have roommates? Because uh, Elton's in Elton's room the whole time, not the whole episode, but just the te- anyway. So that could be that'll be what what you have coming up. You just got a like four minute sampler of it there, and then there's some thank yous at the end between the intro and the uh, episode portion. There is some business that's what again keeps the show free and able to you know put it out twice a week. Yeah, for your consumption, to put you to sleep, to keep you company, to calm you down during the day. That's a, like a larger portion of the show is, uh, you say, hey, I need something to distract, something to, to like, uh, I can't quite chillax, but I would like it if my L-A-Z-A-R-D brain chillaxed. Uh, so maybe if I put this podcast on and I say, you, I got it, you got it. And the whole idea is to keep you company. Like, not, this podcast isn't something you really need to listen to. And it isn't necessarily something that actually does put you to sleep. And more, it keeps you company as you drift off. It distracts you. As I'm, I've been a bit distracted thinking about the, so this tin can thing. So let me see if I could break it out for everybody. Now, some of you may have lived in the tin can phone era. This was a hobbyist phone, by the way. It wasn't an uh, actual communication device, uh, like a mass market thing. Uh, but what it was was, uh, let's see. So, so some of you may have lived during that era. I guess for some reason, uh, well, anyway, it was on cartoons a lot when I was a kid. In maybe like one science class, you would do it. But really, the glory users of the tin can phones were either best friends that happened to live in houses next to one another. I guess kind of CBs and walkie-talkies, uh, as in that great Netflix show, kind of did away with that. 
even though, come on, I mean, those were the greatest, those kids had the greatest walkie talkies ever existed. I mean, I suspended my disbelief for it till just this moment, but it, before you had walkie talkies in movies and cartoons, you had a tin can phone. It may have had gone by another thing. So if you had either a tree house or a best friend with whose bedroom was also ideally parallel to yours, in about 15 feet or less away by window. And you could do this. You know, I bet you one of the great science channels, podcasts, YouTube, you know, check out SciShow. Maybe they've done it. I don't know. Uh, but like, uh, because I don't know. I don't know what the science behind it is. It's sound waves, I would presume. But basically, you take two tin cans, which are also known, were known as soup cans, now I would more call them a bean can because, I mean, I guess you still buy soup. I don't, I guess I don't buy a lot of canned soup. I do buy my bean, I do buy beans and tomato, like uh, if you fire, you know, d- diced tomatoes in cans, but a can that you would buy canned goods in. So you need two of those. Then I think you need a string. Uh, and then you need a, a supervising adult, by the way, always, uh, I like, uh, of course. Then you would need something. I think it, these used to be in tool. This used to be a tool that was used all the time. I don't know if it isn't necessarily anymore. Uh, an awl, A W L, or I guess a hammer and a nail, because I can kind of see this, and and I'm seeing it in my science book now. And then what you do is you you obviously wash out the can, so you have an open end on one ca- end of the can and a closed end on the other. Here's another pro tip, like you want to probably sand down the inside of the open can because it could, you know, just to make sure there's no edges. If we're, you know, if we've got a responsible adult here, we might as well put them to work, you know, get sanding, uh, Aunt Sally. So sand that down. Then you take, let's just say hammer and a nail. You want a pretty big nail, like the kind they use in cartoons and movies on these, in science books. I don't know if that's a double lot or what, but, uh. Then you just tap the nail with the hammer, put a little hole in there. Not, too, I guess not too big a hole, uh, but, you know, a hole. Then you put the string through, then reach through the other side. You knot the string a few times, and then you do the same. Now, you don't want, like, here's probably why I never did it, because the string would have gotten all freaking tangled. I don't, I don't know if Rob or uh, Josh or, uh, can get this to Jeff Probst, but maybe this could be a competition on Survivor. Also, maybe, yeah, maybe Survivor Tin Can Communication. Like, they could call, like, the other tribe and say, hey, what are you doing over there? I got to get to the point of what this thing actually does, though. So you have the string now. You have two tin cans. Now all you do is, and here's one of my favorite words to say, pull it taut. And that's T-H-U-G-H-T, I think. Uh, And then what you can do, and you could whisper, like, whisper, say, hey, uh, hey, sibling. Sorry about that the other day. I love you so much. Uh, or if it was a best friend, you would say stuff to them. And then you have to, I think you have to put it to your ear to listen. So you should use a uh, walkie talkie protocol and say over. Uh, and then you can communicate just like a, a, a telephone or a walkie talkie. And you should have tons of fun with that. Uh, just don't get it tangled. Ideally, uh, you got to use it in some situation where I guess you'd have to speak quiet. Let me know. Those of you that are doing it, uh, I'll think about doing it with my daughter. I'll put that on the, you know, the list of things. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe I could, uh, maybe I'm at emotionally at the point where I could do this, uh, a weekend science project and uh, maybe I could do it in front of her friends. So I say, dad, I wanted a real, f-. I said, well, you, you know, you told me you wanted a phone. Here you go. Tin can phone. We'll run it across the, you know, you, you can't really run it across anywhere where people are walking. That's why in the TV shows and the movies, it was always, uh, so anyway, that's a tin can phone. I think my point was, if I was going to try to make that into a metaphor that it, at least in my, this was all, you know, when they say scoots, what did you aspire to be as a kid? Well, treehouse owner, uh, communicate, you know, having a bit like a member of the Goonies, uh, it could be talk to some, have a best friend. Of course, if it was the eighties and it would develop, you know, one day into a blossoming romance, uh, that I talked to by tin can phone, 
and or also parallel you have awesome walkie talkies uh go on, you know adventures uh mostly those things though tend, what would you take you know if we said scale it down it's well to treehouse uh and the tin can phone you know because i know the goonies uh they are, but you know then we have the netflix show but those kids are already full up too so yeah i guess one of those two those things uh, that, that's what i'd like and how scoots how is that a metaphor for the podcast well you know when you're lying there in bed it's always nice to have somebody to talk to and ideally you 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 like but that's like uh that's aspirationally really it's just nice to have someone to take your mind off of stuff to know you're not uh, to, to to not feel alone and maybe to put that tin can phone to your ear and they say well anyway i was tell i was talking to my teddy bear about uh uh, buying shirts, uh, and I say, well, what size do you wear? But do, well, how come no shirt? You know. And then I said, well, yeah. well, why don't you uh, snuggle up out here under my? You know, that's the kind of thing that might take your mind off stuff, keep you company. That's the kind of thing we do on this show, and mostly because I know how it feels. I've been there, so I guess that's kind of the summary of the show. Also, I guess a little uh, monologue about tin can phones, and probably you know, ideally the you know emails will be coming in with corrections, which I appreciate. And I say, okay, well, that's good to know. I would have mi- would have wondered why, I wondered why my tin can phones never worked. Oh, that, Jeff, thanks for getting back to me. I didn't realize why that's why you wouldn't base the whole season. Actually, Jeff, I didn't say the whole season of Survivor based on that. It just said it'd be a cool thing. Maybe it could be, maybe instead of further family visits, they talk by tin can phone. They say, well, you didn't earn a family visit, uh, but you could talk to them by tin can phone. No. Okay, hello? Oh, that was an imaginary uh, version of Jeff Probst anyway. Also, this episode's going to come out. I don't even know if there'll be survival being anyway. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. And uh, I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Uh, I work very hard. I yearn and I strive for it. Uh, and I uh, appreciate your time. And uh, here's a couple of ways we keep the show uh, going. Hey, everybody. It's uh, it's getting spring is sprung. And you know what's in our merch store is our Bella Flowey tank top with the Sleep With Me logo. One of the most uh, popular items we've sold in the past. And uh, great. It comes in tons of different sizes. It's really, really comfortable. It's one of those tank tops that you could you could get two. You could wear get one for sleeping in, and then one for chilling and chillaxing in, or hanging out in the park in. And you could get all that over at sleepwithmepodcast dot com slash store. We got the the sleep spray, custom sleep phones. Uh, what else we got? The uh, the 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 the, the, the new S- sleep with me uh, lounge pants. So if you haven't got any merch yet, or just a sleep with me logo tee. Uh, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash shop. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, everybody. We're talking about uh, season two, episode 10 or 11, depending on how you're counting. But the way I've been counting uh, is uh, it's episode 11. And it's uh, episode's called Love and Puppies. Uh, who couldn't love anything more than a puppy? Oh, no. love, But it really is like a pun on puppy love, uh, which I just realized this second. It starts with uh, this dude running, uh, and there's, he's running. There's running music. It kind of sounds like something out of the musicals, uh, Stomp or uh, Blue Person Group. And speaking of blue, one thing that stuck out to me was the uh, one thing that stuck out to me was the blue doors and the warehouses. They look like they were just fresh painted for the episode. And there's these brick warehouses. Uh, let's see, war, 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 warehouse doors, that's what that says, brick building, oh, I said, and then the TARDIS, uh, and then we have the TARDIS theme music, the woo-woo-woo mystical music, as this uh, mystery person, but seems friendly, walks up and touches it, and that's when you kind of see a little bit of sloppy painting from the crew, you know, no offense, uh, and that, I guess... It just it just rarely do I notice those things. Could have been the city of wherever they are. Uh, then Rose yells for the doctor. So this character, the new character, keeps running. He's inside a warehouse now. There's a little cookie because a couple of the pieces of equipment look like uh, Daleks. Uh, then 
Oh, yeah, Dalek lookalikes. Industrial building opens the door. There's a being there, like a like a pup, puppy, like, a, you know, from another universe uh, world. There's a puppy-based being, and this character, like, does it. And this is actually a witty, fun episode. I forgot to say that. Different than the normal, normal episode of uh, Who. Yeah, but it cuts to our character talking to the camera. And he says, if you think that was the exciting, most exciting day of my way of life, uh, just wait till you hear the rest. Then he says, oh boy, just like Scooter said, I mean, in a different way, but just like I say on the podcast. Uh, then the episode opens. Uh, he's back and talking to the camera. I was in person being doctor with, oh no. At first, he's back at the camera, I think, the, the episode. I'm like uh, two seconds ahead of the episode. Oh, yeah, there he talks to the camera. Then we're back at the warehouse with the doctor holding a pork chop for the puppy. And there's a little comedy with uh, blue buckets and not not blue buckets and rows. And then, like, uh, some cartoon, like, uh, endless uh, running with Rose, the doctor, and the puppy. And the doctor told the, this other character to hit the road. Chase's rod and blue but oh Chase's uh yeah they're just chasing with the red and blue buckets uh, then the doctor stops uh, I don't know what yeah when he's running maybe he says uh, don't I know you from somewhere to this character then we hear TARDIS dude Brian's what does that mean dude breaks maybe he breaks out of there when the doctor says don't I know you yeah it's happening right now hold on uh, don't I know you and yeah, he breaks out. He says, something about that, he says, I got to hit the road. Then we hear TARDIS sounds. So while he was running, things resolved themselves, and the doctor and Rose took off. And uh, he talks about how much he loves the sound. He's leaning against the wall. They didn't have a chance to look this up, but I know this kind of episode, it's not a recap episode. It does have some recaps, but an episode where uh, the main characters take a break, or the actresses and actors, uh, but so that's what this, I didn't look that up, so I don't even know. Uh, but let's see, there's R- Endless Hallway. Oh, we already covered that. Leaning. Uh, Ursula without the, uh, oh, without the Then we see Ursula on camera. It's a brand new camera. The character's talking. He says, they're outside my family home. He says, uh, the people that live there now, they're a bit severe. And I love that uh, phrase. There's a few different good phrases in here. Oh boy, of course, uh, a bit severe. And he kind of gives a reason, like he goes, when I first met the doctor, I was four years old. Oh, by the way, my name's Elton. You know, even though you're eight minutes into the episode, Scoots, I'll share it now. Uh, Still don't know why the doctor was there. Then he has this moment. He's talking to the camera and Ursula. And he has this moment where he looks off, you know, a thousand yard. And then he does a recap of his other run-ins with the doctor, which were the mannequin episode. Uh, Twelve months later, when the thing went into the big, big, big bin. Uh, then the Christmas Day episode that started this season off, which feels like a long time ago. Uh, which kind of did some stuff to Elton's room. And he said, I had to r- r- do a uh, rudimentary pulley system to reach my boots future of the episode and realize the truth that El- Elton thanks. Oh, that's when, uh, like it, they flash forward. I think it to like the episode resolves everything, uh, and restores the truth. Elton thanks. I don't know what that actually means. I'm watching it right now. Um, and then there's a sunset of a different short, uh, sunset, different shirt. Uh, I think he changed shirts. So there was a new scene with Elton. Uh, but he goes, this isn't my whole life. Uh, let me see where it is. Let me check the uh, transcript, too. Yeah, so Elton's talking. In my bed, nice and cozy. That's when I got woken up about the... Okay, here we go. This is where it gets interesting. Uh, uh, then he talks about yeah, how he, he saw the doctor. Oh, no, that's... Uh, let me. I may, I'm always mixed up here. No problem, though. Oh, he flashes forward to when he met Jackie Tyler, Victor Kennedy, and finally the doctor. That's what he's kind of setting up. Uh, 
But he goes, geez, this isn't my whole life, just uh, spaceships and the doctor. I like football. I like drink. I like Spain. And if there's one thing I really love, it's Jeff Lynn and ELO, Electric Light Orchestra. And then he's dancing to Blue Sky, Mr. Blue Sky. Sorry, Blue Sky. I didn't mean to call you uh, just Blue Sky. And uh, let's see, I've seen him as a kid. Mr. Skinner, the inner. Oh, okay, well, I'm ahead of myself. Jeff Lynn, Blue Sky Dancing. Then we cut to Elton working on the case. Uh, he's observing a blog about the doctor with a snow effect. Uh, never been signed talking on a park bench. This is when he t- talks to Ursula. Uh, then he says something about Trafalgar Square. So the spaceship, uh, we all went to Trafalgar Square. Oh, after the, and we, uh, that's when he's, that's where he saw the doctor. Uh, then he meets Ursula, who has the block. She says, we're the inner sanctum. We're all studying the doctor. And they kind of talk about how he does an age. Uh, and he goes, that's how I met Ursula. And uh, then there was a community of us. Uh, Ursula, for, for a while, was a proper mate. And then we found this community of people with stories about the doctor. And we used to meet uh, in uh, below the main old library on uh, Maester Street or something. Mr. Skinner, who was also named Colin Skinner, uh, he goes by Mr. Skinner. Also, the actor who was, um, I apologize, I can, I can look it up, but... Uh, yeah, uh, he's he was in one of the or maybe he's in both seasons of uh uh, uh, uh like uh, Alan Partridge, or was he only in the first season? I can't remember. I think he's in both. Uh, he's a bit of a, like he plays this great foil, I guess. In uh, in uh, in Alan Partridge, a great one of my favorite shows or comedies. Uh, okay, so that's how. I met Ursula. Then we had the community. This is five minutes in. Green all. Let me see. Cause it, uh, let's see. What, uh, five minutes. I guess I'm supposed to pause, pause it. Or, no, this is not five minutes in. Mr. Skinner, Colin. Or pause ten minutes. Yeah, for something. Oh, because he's giving this presentation. So this becomes this like beautiful short montage. Because uh, they say, we used to meet up uh, in... Uh, like, uh, like, and just talk about the doctor, you know, Mr. Skinner, Bliss, uh, uh, Bridget. And, and then we started talking about more things. First they do, uh, okay, wait a second. Here's Mr. Skinner. He's talking about the mythological structures, the archetypes of the doctor, the fool, the king, the, the, the trickster or the, the stranger. Uh, and it kind of shows how they're interactive. Uh, really cool art. Uh, uh, so he's giving that one. Then Bridget gives a slideshow about uh, how there's more than one doctor, but the police box uh, is the thing. And uh, it's just shown up in history, even in uh, Egypt. Uh, then Bliss is showing about like kind of more of an interpretive uh, art around uh, like uh, like physical art that she's done around uh, the doctor and representations uh, but it really is more of an actual insight into who the doctor is and uh, then it becomes you know then we uh, oh they so we should have a name it gets cuter by the minute the first act at least uh, and uh, he says london in, in investigation in detective agency letter n so Linda and everybody said, he said, I always wanted to have some like fish and chips, uh, rock and roll, shock and Demas and pliers. And Ursula says, did you just think of that? Or and he goes, no, I've waited my whole life to use the Linda, Linda United, they say. And Ursula kind of gives him a cool look. Uh, oh, uh, Simon Green, Greenall, Greenall is the actor that plays uh, Mr. Skinner. Yeah, so then it, it, there's this n- another montage, uh, uh, bridge to shell cooking. I don't know what that means. Sh- cheers to Linda. They have a cheers to Linda, but then they show kind of how they're sharing. Uh, Mr. Skinner reads from his novel and it just like the people they're living, uh, 
they're had kind of have like a, they're eating, they're sharing like r- r- truth uh, from their hearts. Uh, they become real friends. Bliss sings some of her music, uh, and everybody sings. I gave my love a cherry. I've got a brand new pair of roller skates, uh, a couple of on banjo. And then it just get, yeah, it still gets better. Like uh, uh, Elton says, I, I confess my love of ELO. Uh, so then we became musical, Linda, and they were singing as a group, uh, uh, Don't Bring Me Down. Real, oh, man, this episode is good. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, the the and then oh then the there's a power surge uh, and because that's when it all changed. Victor Kennedy showed up uh, and the golden age was gone. And as Victor Kennedy rolls in, and you can tell that like uh, it, like uh, there's something up. It's like they don't like act like there isn't. Uh, but uh, he doesn't shake hands with anybody. He uh, solution. What does that mean? Let's get ahead here. Uh, got work to do. Oh, there's Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, no, uh, felt like we were getting closer. Well, maybe I jumped ahead. Here's Victor Kennedy. Uh, he's rolling in. Okay, they say, uh, you know, I don't shake hands. Uh, he goes, you forgot. He goes, aren't you looking for the doctor? You get to, gotta get to work. Oh, he talks about how the sound, uh, continues. He shows him this video. He goes, that's the sound of the universe. And he says, uh, you, Elton, you've heard it before. And he goes, yeah, I forgot about it till, till, till just now. But it was the night uh, when I was getting, I went downstairs. And then he, they said, what is it? And he goes, it's their spa- his spaceship. Uh, and he says, use the Torchwood files, get to work. Uh, we got to find the doctor. Uh, sound of the universe, Elton's attention. Uh, then, uh, once we'll be one step closer to the doctor, see a goods only sign when they leave. Victor talks to bliss. Uh, uh, but then there's like another montage where he says, now we're working for, uh, uh, Victor, uh, uh, Kennedy. I never thought about it as work from doctor. I don't know what that means. Uh, Ursula says that, uh, until now. Oh, cause Elton says, yeah, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, pause for the de- desk details. Okay, so then we go back to this when, like, after a quick montage. Maybe this is a montage. We see uh, Victor Kennedy's kind of totally taking things over. And uh, he's got a desk set up in the basement. He's got globes. Uh, he's got a, bu- like, a bust, uh, an hourglass, uh, three things of uh, adult beverage, scrolls. It looks like he has four, three light-up globes uh, of different colors, then one uh, wooden globe, a, a bunch of you know brass lamp. Uh, uh, but yeah, he's got a lot going on. Let's see if the, I'll let it play and see if there's anything. Oh, yeah, we're peeling out. Uh, he's got a coat rack. Elton's working with, uh, like, uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, he also has something like a Tesla lamp, but it's not. Uh, but Elton has, like, a blue... Uh, one of those transparent blue rulers that you have in like middle school. He raises it when he has a question. Wool, Woolrich police box. Uh, uh, they found a clue. Woolwich, Woolwich. And they say, get over there. Uh, but then Elton kind of froze. Uh, and this is the beginning of the episode. Elton's the one that finds it. They do a fast forward. Uh, so then he froze. So then Victor's, uh, not nice. He says, how could you have froze? Then we see the power and strength of Ursula because she stands up to him. She says, this is not proper. We're working together, Mr. Kennedy. Don't raise your voice at anybody. And he says, duly noted, Ursula is the strong one. And then they say, we're, we're going to switch it up. We're going to try to find the doctor's companion now. It's a bad wolf something. It protected her ID. It also, the doctor said this, which I find. I don't like to be touched literally or metaphorically. Uh, so they, they head to London. 
And uh, like uh, Ethan, e- Elton says, uh, how am I going to find a girl out of 10 million people? Uh, you know, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. And the first person she asks, she says, oh, yeah, that's Rose uh, Tyler. She lives at Bucknell House uh, right down the road, number 48. Her mom's Jackie Tyler, bit odd, nice family. Uh, we get to the uh, blue, blue sky, Elton's running. We see him dancing. And we see Jackie at the laundry. It turns out she likes to go to the pub quiz at the Spinning Wheel pub. Elton pretends to go into laundry to do a fake wash, kind of talks about the training they've gotten from Victor Kennedy. Pretends to wash his shirt, but Jackie needs change. No, Elton's the kind of person that carries change, maybe because uh, so he's able to make a connection with her. Her washing machine's broken, that's why she's there. So Elton starts going, there's another montage kind of of Elton fixing her house, her fuses. And uh, then uh, uh, she goes, Jackie says to him, I should have you on tap. Uh, I liked that one. I should have you on tap, like to, to fix stuff around the house. And she goes, I used to have somebody named Mickey do all this stuff, but not anymore. Yeah, he's gone away. And she also says, uh, let's put on the telly and have some tea, but I, I can't bear it silent. She doesn't like it quiet. She goes, yeah, it's my daughter. I got a bunch of pictures of her up. She's traveling. Name her Rose. And Ellen says, well, that's a nice name. Where's she at? Uh, she goes, all over. She calls me through a mobile Says, oh, who's she with? Your mates. Uh, and then I wouldn't story far for here. Everyone proud of, uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, she says, you're a charmer. Uh, oh, he says, uh, if I had enough cup of tea like this, uh, I wouldn't stray far from home. Then we go back and everybody's proud of Elton for, you know, meeting Jackie. And, uh. Except for Ursula, Ursula actually is impressed with Jackie's chest, she says. That was unexpected. They say, keep it up, Elton, buddy. Uh, Mr. Skinner and Bridget are proud. It turns out those two are going to date Mr. Skinner and Bridget. They're fixing, uh, but then uh, uh, Victor Kennedy kind of takes care of that. Uh, then there's a montage of uh, Elton fixing Jackie's place up and doing a lot of work there. Elton has actually has abs and a t- like he wears tight pants and he has a tight butt and Jackie's like uh, checking it out. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. He goes, I can't believe how much work she needed uh, done around her place. Uh, he's weird. Uh, and uh, it's, he says it's like the flat, like a, uh, then Jackie gives him a glass of wine. She gets a little reward from a handy person. And he goes, well, I got to go. She goes, you could always splash out on a taxi, see what happens or whatever. And he goes, is this wine French? Jake says, I suppose to. I suppose so. They know how to do things, the French. But Elton's still working a rose angle. And Jake says, my daughter's not coming home tonight, in case you're wondering. Uh, then she's playing Il Devo. They're talking about it. And then she goes, is it hot in here or is it just you, Elton? Uh, she goes, take your jacket off. Uh, then she spills some wine on his shirt. She goes, I'm sorry. He goes, it's fine. She goes, no, no, no. Let me put it in the wash. Uh, he goes, no, it's not very much. So then she pours more wine on him. Uh, then Elton kind of goes into the bathroom. Let's see what we got. Had a boy. Uh, Elton can't take a hint out from Jackie. Uh, Elton is fit, uh, cause then he, t- he goes in the bathroom, he like takes his shirt off, uh, he's g- getting ready, uh, uh, like, uh, and then he comes out, but uh, like without a shirt on and, uh, Jackie's got a call from Rose, killing me softly by Il Devos playing in the background. And he says a great thing. He says, funny thing, uh, you, funny things you think of when your shirt's off because he had a moment, uh. Uh, then the term swanning off gets used, proper mates. Uh, he says, Jake, how about we be proper mates and get a pizza? Uh, then we have Elton coming back uh, with a pizza uh, to Jackie's. 
but she, Jackie, figured everything out that he was like uh, trying to figure out the doctor. So she's not happy. But then also during this part of the scene, there's a flashback to Ursula because by taking his shirt off uh, for Jackie, uh, Elton realized he was in love with Ursula. Jackie knew because she went in his coat to give him money. Feeling hurt. Uh, Jackie uses the term, those that get left behind. Uh, uh, something because you, you you become hard because it is hard or something. Uh, so we really get like, even though it's short, we get a deep insight into Jackie. Uh, she says, you know, I'm not going to like, I, I'm, I'm a guardian of the doctor and Rose. Uh, uh, then, uh, hit the road, Jack. She says, uh, you and your pizza tisk tisk. Uh, then Elton's not happy with Victor Kennedy. Because he says, what are you doing, like, roping us into this stuff? So then Victor Tendy gives this big speech. Uh, Nelton gives it back. He says, you've gone all wrong. We were having fun till you showed up. And he goes, I'm out of here. And he goes, as for you, Ursula, would you like to go get, uh, go have a Chinese? Uh, and he goes, she goes, what do you mean? He goes, like, a date. Uh, and she goes, yeah. And they go, Mr. Skinner, you want to leave with us? So, like, you can't come on our date, but you can roll out with us. Uh, but then he says, Mr. Skinner, I think I got a, um, like, uh, who, who, uh, who's, whoever he was dating, uh, Bridges' phone number. I think they say, good luck, goodbye. Uh, so he says, Mr. Skinner, can you stay? But then they, Elton and Ursula leave, but then they had forgotten their phone, his, uh, Ursula's phone. What does it say? Oh, libraries. Yeah, because you see the library sign. Then they realize that something's not right because they say, Mr. Skinner's in the restroom. Victor Kennedy says, and they say, there is no restroom. You got to go around the block to the pub. And uh, Pace of Pavwe Nouns. Uh, uh, oh, he's reading the newspaper, Victor Kennedy. I wanted to get a couple of uh, reads off of that. Um and then we realize that Victor Kennedy is from, you know, another world too. And, uh, he's been up to no good. Uh, he's been using them obviously like, uh, they all, you know, that's like pretty far for the course. Uh, also like, uh, it, it, I want to get to the dialogue, but let me see this newspaper thing first. Uh, they're going to get their phone, come back. They open the door. And it looks like, let's see, yeah, what paper is he reading? The Daily Telegraph. We're going to slow zoom. I was just trying to see if there was, if it's a real paper, or there's jokes on it or anything. Usually not uh, any jokes. Uh, looks like some people on the cover. And still zooming in. Uh, yeah, I can't read. It's a little blurry. Let's see if it goes back one more time. Because it was a full close up. Uh, four months of, uh, yeah, so a lot of the weather's on the backside, a couple of crosswords. Uh, there's a commercial. So it, is, it looks like a real paper talking about, the, you know, different things. Uh, so then he, he says, yeah, I'm a collective of absorb. I'm an absorbent collective. Uh, that's the being I am. And uh, they say, what do you mean, absorbent collective? Uh, and they say, yeah, we'd be like, so Skinner, like, and then Elton goes, are you absorbathon, an absorbling, an absorbal off? Uh, Victor goes, yeah, I like that, absorbal off. But Bliss, uh, Bridget, and Mr. Skinner, they become part of the collective. And let's see, uh, sponge, yes, a sponge like uh, thing. Uh, Ursula. Oh, 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 Ursula's like, I can, oh, Ur then Ursula joins the collective. She says, you know what, Elton, uh, not sure, but uh, like, uh, she, ought, she just joins the collective. It's a mistake. Like, uh, like, because uh, Victor, the Victor of Absorbathon or whatever, Absorbaloff, you know, do, do tricks her kind of. She says, get out, Elton. Uh, Elton, then Elton and the, um, Absorbaloff, they do a little running, but Elton's like, uh, there's no point, really. Uh, the, like everything I've ever wanted has been absorbed. Uh, and the absorbable office says, uh, dissolve into me. 
Then we have a TARDIS inbound. It rolls up, but it rolls up not to uh, for Elton, but so that Rose can uh, berate Elton on behalf of Jackie. She says, no one upsets my mom. And, uh, you know, that makes sense, this very thing. Uh, and he goes, well, actually, he goes, there's an absorb, absorb a being here. Uh, and the doctor's kind of just playing coy the whole time. And then he goes, wait a second, are you an Absorbatrix, an Absorbaclon? And absorb a lot. He goes, yeah, absorb a lot. And they go, are you, Rose says, are you from Slothene? Raxif- you know, are you Slothene from Raxacophalotorpus? Raxacorocophalotorpus or whatever? He goes, no, 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 I'm a twin planet. Uh, he goes, what's that called? Rax- they love saying Raxacorocophalotorpus. And he says, Klom. And they go, Klom. He goes, yeah, Klom. And he goes, I'm going to be a hero there when I roll back with your time machine. And the doctor goes, that's not going to happen. And he goes, yes, it is. They go back and forth. And he goes, well, one way it wouldn't is a, a collective decollectiving of your absorbable offing. And so that's what happens. And while that's happening, it, uh, 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 Ursula says, if you cra- he had like a little bit of a cane, a fancy cane, more of a decorative cane than uh, she says, if you crack that in half, it's like a magic wand. Uh, uh, that'll be it for the Zorbaloff. Uh, and then, yeah, so he ends up being absorbed, the Zorbaloff. Uh, it's a very Hoovian moment after this. Uh, Ursula becomes a part of a paving stone. Like, she becomes a collective with that. She says, bye-bye, Elton. You know, Elton's not happy about it. Uh, uh, so Rose gives him a big hug. She feels his lost love, and she kind of holds out in a sort of sweet moment. And uh, you see there's a couple of, like, endings to this, because he goes, and that's it, uh, almost. Uh, this is Elton on camera. He goes, because there's one more thing about the doctor. And then the doctor explains to Elton, uh, and, and, and through flashbacks, how, yeah, I was at your house. Uh, I was dealing with some elemental shade. and. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was running late, but I got there. Uh, Ian Elton says, we forget what we must. And he says, so that's it, basically. Uh, you know, some good things, you know, some not so great. I can't tell the difference. Uh, Stephen King once said, salvation and darnation are the same thing. And I didn't know he met till now. Uh, because the doctor's wonderful, and but at the same time, I was having a special time before that, just for a bit. Uh, had this nice little gang, and it's not his fault, but uh, I wonder what happens if you touch the doctor, which made me think, has anyone touched the doctor? I would assume so, but I don't know if that's a thing or not. Uh, he goes, because they keep thinking of Rose and Jackie. Then we hear Ursula's voice. uh and then he goes, oh, yeah, the doctor used his magic wand to make Ursula a sentient uh, paving stone. Uh, what else? Uh, Garden Ursula version. And he says, yeah, this is Ursula. He goes, it's a relationship of sorts. And there's even, like, more, like, WTF discussions in there. And it's like, we're just one of those very Hoovian, uh, where you're, it just takes this uh, odd little turn. And... uh also, he says, so this is kind of my girlfriend now. Also, my camera, I got a re- new camera with a remote zoom. And let's see, Elton doesn't want a normal life. What is this, his closing thoughts? Uh, he goes, oh, yeah, when you're a kid, you're supposed to grow up, get a job, get married, get a house, have a kid, that's it. Uh, because the world's so much stranger than this. Uh, uh, darker, madder, and so much better. And with that, the episode ends. Okay, let's talk about some of the uh, research that came up in this episode. Uh, the first thing was Stop, which is a musical. Uh, I think I saw it one time in New York, uh, like uh, off Broadway. It's a percussion group, though. It started in Brighton in the UK. Uses body and ordinary objects to create a physical theater and music. Uh, Steve McNichols and Luke Cresswell started in Brighton in 1991. Uh, they first worked as a, like as a members of another uh, theater group. Uh, they were in the Edinburgh Festival in the 80s. And uh, P- P- Pookie Snackenberger, that was their group. Uh, Pookie Snackenberger, that was their group. Their, t- their TV show, commercials, uh, 
Uh, then they uh, did some out- large-scale outdoor events with drum orchestras on a pontoon uh, and a uh, 120-piece drum orchestra. And then they, in 91, uh, they started the original Soul Stomp show, won Best of the Fringe, uh, uh, previewed in uh, the Bloomsbury Theater in London. Uh, became like a eight person outfit, uh, went from seven to eight, uh, you know, between 91 and 94, they toured to sold out shows, uh, returned to London, uh, did a run at Orpheum theater in New York in 94. So this is right where I would have saw them. And, uh, then, uh, uh toured North American Japan. They've had a larger scale one with 30 members. Uh, 2006, they had their 5,000th New York performance. Uh, they made it like a uh, IMAX movie. Uh, they have a show. Stomp, I wonder if that's still going. Stomp Out Loud in Las Vegas. Uh, their London show did end the the run. So that's a little bit about Stomp, which also brings up the Blue Men Group. Uh, now they were, I think they started in maybe New York. I don't know where they started. Uh, they have cont- ongoing uh, 87. Uh, they currently have productions in Berlin, Boston, Chicago, Las Vegas, New York City, and Orlando. And uh, they, before, before, this is like a so culturally thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, they have seven to nine full time performers. It grew out of a collaboration between Chris Wink, Matt Goldman, and Phil Stanton in Manhattan's Lower East Side in 1987. Uh, the three, they, uh, yeah, they, they, like, uh, did as these strange blue men. They did, like, street theater, small shows at downtown clubs, uh, and eventually started, a, like, a full performance in the Astor Theater in 91. No, but theirs is, like, a little bit more of a theatrical production than just a musical production. So I think I probably saw them maybe in Astor Place, I guess. Uh, so it's a blue person group. What about this ELO that we were hearing about and Jeff Lynn? I know not everybody's familiar with it, uh, though I am. Uh, ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, Orchestra is an ro- English rock band formed in Birmingham, Birmingham in 1970. Jeff Lynn, Roy Wood, and Bev Bevan. It's a fusion of Beatlesque pop, classical arrangements, and futuristic icon- iconography. Wood departed in 72, and Lynn became the band's leader, arranging, producing every album, writing all the material. Uh, for the t- initial ten- tenure, it was Lynn Bevan and uh, keyboardist Richard Tandy. It was formed out of Lennon Wood's desire to create modern rock and pop songs with some classical overtones. Offshoot of Wood's previous band, The Move. Uh, between the 70s and the 80s, they released a sting, string of top 10 albums and two LPs that topped the British charts, uh, Discovery in 79 and Time in 86 and 81. Uh, by 86, they had stopped... Uh, uh, Bevan did form a band, ELO Part 2, which became the orchestra. They did do a short-lived reunion in the, two, uh, the aughts. Uh, and now Lynn and Tandy are together with Jeff Lynn's ELO. Uh, but yeah, I think that's like, uh, I mean, their biggest hits are like Blue Sky, Can't Get It Out of My Head. Uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot more. I mean, and then Jeff Lynn is also a part of Traffic Wilburys and produced like uh, albums for uh, like uh, George Harrison, Roy Orbison, uh, Tom Petty, uh, Paul McCartney, uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of other things. So, so not only Jeff Lynn, a musician, but is a, a great producer. And it, I guess I, I'm going to have to sit down and listen to some ELO that's not the top of songs, because I don't think I've ever listened to just ELO by itself. Uh, and uh, so I guess I, I'm remiss. Uh, okay, Trafalgar Square was another thing. That's a public square in the city of Westminster, West, Westminster uh, central London, uh, built around the area formerly known as Charing Cross. Uh, 
and it c- commemorates uh, the Battle of Trafalgar during the Napoleonic Wars off the ca- off of Cape Trafalgar. Uh, the site has been a significant landmark since the 13th century when it contained the King's Muse. Uh, after George IV moved the Muse to Buckingham Palace, uh, the area was redeveloped by John Nash. Uh, Nelson's Column was placed uh, in 1844 when the square opened. Uh, there's uh, other commemorative sculptures that occupy the square. Uh, but the fourth plinth, uh, plinth uh, has been left empty since 1840, uh, but has been host of contemporary art since 1999. There's been a lot of gatherings there and uh, celebrations. It's owned by the Queen and managed by the Greater London Authority. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, history, uh, development, uh, columns. Redevelopment in 2003. The plinth, the fourth plinth, the uh, sculptures, it's got fountains. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm like, I, I guess I've been there, I would assume. Uh, sports victory parades. There's other Trafalgar squares, of course, in other cities. I was just trying to see what uh, t- tube stations were near, but I would assume Charing Cross. Uh, but that's just a little bit about Trafalgar Square. Uh, what about uh, uh, Shakademus and Pliers? Uh, that's a reggae duo. Uh, Shakademus, uh, uh, the DJ, and the singer Pliers. Uh, they had hits, uh, the two hits that I, like you've probably heard of, and neither one I could say in the show. I began collaborating in the in 90s. Uh, they were already established musicians when they teamed up, uh, they performed together in Miami, uh, both uh, solo artists and together and with other groups. Uh, they appeared at Reggae Sunsplash in 1992, and that's when their f- first hit came out, along with a couple of their well done, you know, songs that were su- successful too. And they use Shakademus in- Sh- and Pliers, but they, when uh, Elton shared it. It was in you. Know, it was just a letter apostrophe in. I did some googling about the Spinning Wheel Pub uh, because I just wanted to see if it was real and uh, if Jackie would have gone there. But the first thing I came up with this is this website for the Spinning Wheel Inn in Branson, Missouri. It's closed right now. I think right because it's off season. But they said if you're looking for any something fancy, we're not for you. If you're looking for clean and affordable, we're the perfect place to stay. And I liked that. Uh, I just liked that. Uh, and they have another property next door, Twelve Oaks Inn, uh, which says uh, that one's not fancy either. So that's good news. Uh, yeah, but then I also found a Yelp review for Spinning Wheel London, uh, which uh, doesn't look like it's open currently. It only has two stars out of two reviews. Uh, and it was on Northfields Avenue in London, 227, and let's see, uh, one user said uh, uh, the spinning wheel should be uh, called the spinner. Oh, the spinner's great if you want to go somewhere with live music. Uh, uh, Place looks better in the evenings if you've had a few drinks. Uh, You find yourself thirsty in Northfields. There are better pubs, uh, but if you fancy a boogie, uh, or some pretty good bands come in and pop in the spinner, but that person only rated it three stars. That to me is a four or five star view. And then another person said uh, they're closed. Uh, this was in 2011, and it's going to be a grocery store, a Sainsbury's grocery store. So that's news. Uh, uh, Il Devo is a, a crossover group. I don't know. Is this the one that, yes, yeah, Simon Cowell formed it? Uh, it uh, has uh, 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 like a worldwide uh, singers. Uh, it stands for Divine Performer. Sold 30 million copies of albums worldwide. So that's pretty great. Uh, yeah, they've got 2 million concert tickets. Uh, Simon Cowell came up with the concept because uh, he said, what well, if you take three tenors, you make them younger, multinational, and you have four. And they said, do it. Uh, 
And so they did it. He, 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 if, yeah, so they've been around since 2004. So time does fly, even when you're Il Devo. Uh, let's see if they're still putting stuff out. I mean, I would assume Artists of the Decade in 2010, Il Devo on Broadway. Uh, they've sold 28 million albums. Uh, they won the Silver Clef Award. And then uh, reinventing Il Devo. So, you know, just like a lot of things, they go through different uh, stages. That's Il Devo. Yeah, oh, this is the term attaboy got used in this um, uh, this episode. And whenever I hear attaboy, I think of, of High Fructose and uh, Daniel Seifert, uh, who's an artist. I just want to link to it mostly. Uh, uh, just, just remember how, getting these issues of high fructose and just looking at uh, the art and uh, my mind being blown. You can find out everything current over at uh, yumfactory.com. Uh, oh, swanning around, swanning off, I think is what uh, Jaggy said about Rose. I said, what, that's another good one other than a bit severe. And it's an idiom that has a fairly recent origin. Uh, it means to move about aimlessly or irresponsibly in a carefree manner. So maybe swanning off just means wandering off whenever you want. Uh, first appeared in the late 19th century, uh, cause it was just the way swans swim. And then I'll just close things off reading, uh, Mr. Blue Sky by ELO, Jeff Lynn. Uh, first it talks, it starts with this radio thing where it says, uh, good morning. Today's forecast calls for blue skies. Sun is shining in the sky. There ain't a cloud in sight. It sounds raining. Everybody's in the play. And don't you know, it's a beautiful new day. Hey, EA. Running down the avenue. See how the sun shines brightly in the city. On the streets where once was pity, Mr. Blue Sky is living here today. Uh, hey, hey, Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why you had to hide away for so long. So long. Where did we go wrong? Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why you had to hide away for so long. So long. Where did we go wrong? Uh, hey, you with a pretty face, welcome to the human race. A celebration, Mr. Blue Sky is up there waiting. And today is the day we've waited for. Or, uh, Mr. Blue Sky, Mr. Blue Sky, Mr. Blue Sky. Please tell us why you hide, had to hide away for so long, so long. Where did we go wrong? Hey there, Mr. Blue. We're so pleased to be with you. Look around, see what you do. Everybody smiles at you. Hey there, Mr. Blue. We're so pleased to be with you. Look around, see what you do. Everybody smiles at you. Mr. Blue, you did it right. But here comes Mr. Knight. Uh, creeping over. Now his hand is on your shoulder. Never mind. I'll remember you. This, I'll remember you this way. Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why you had to hide away for so long. Where did we go wrong? Hey there, Mr. Blue Sky. We're so pleased to be with you. Look around, see what you do. Everybody smiles at you. And I think then there's a thing to turn the album over, maybe. It also reminds me, my brother, uh, uh, for a time he edited... Uh, uh, well, like freelance edited with skateboard videos sometimes, uh, particularly for, um, well, for, particularly for, for one, one per like a, like a actor skateboarder. Uh, and, uh, when he was doing a rough cut of one, he used Mr. Blue Sky. Obviously they didn't have the right. So it was just a rough cut. Uh, but it was such a cool, like there's, if you make skateboarding video, mix that song in there, if you can get the rights to it, cause it looks awesome. Or like a snowboarding or a, a skiing video, like a friend Carolyn who listens. Uh, anyway, thanks everybody and uh, good night. Uh, I want to thank everybody that reviewed the show over on Apple Podcasts. Incognito82 said, uh, "Sleep well." 
Uh, his voice is boring and flat, basically blabbering on about nothing. This is a five-star review, by the way. It puts me into sleep so good. I love this podcast. I listen to it even when I don't have sleeping issues. Yeah, thank you, Incognito. Uh, Maskey, Maskey, uh, double Z, says, love this. And my mom recommended it. We're both insomniacs. Right away, I fell in love with this podcast. Uh, been listening for the whole year. Never failed me. Thank you so much. Uh, Heidi Carrots uh, says, best there is. I've been listening for a couple of years. Love it. After uh, uh, trying other things, uh, uh, I came back to my boar bay. Uh, thanks, Scoots. Thanks, Heidi. Oh, this is weird. This is also from Incognito82. Huh. So maybe that's like a code name or something. This Incognito82 says, uh, that the podcast used to have background music, so they don't like it anymore, but it didn't. Uh, so maybe, I, I don't know what they, um, so I don't know. Uh, they don't like the, like, uh, we didn't ever had any, ba- we just have the beginning music, is it? Um, okay. Uh, Ali Kai says, this is the best. Uh, sleep issues, tried OTC, uh, everything, oils, uh, sound. Some things help, but with uh, unwanted side effects, and some things didn't work at all. Scoots and sleeping me is the best. It works every time, whether I'm getting in bed or waking up or help back getting back to sleep or taking a nap. Uh, I listen every day, sometimes more than once a day. Uh, let's see. I think that's it for that, because the next one's a uh, good old uh, epic Scorps, uh, who says, don't listen to the uh, trolls. Okay, so I bounced over uh, to uh, cast uh, cast box. Their comments. Uh, uh, Phil Boyd uh, says, uh, "Like the podcast very much. Sometimes you make me laugh. I'll keep on dropping in." Uh, Chad says, "I've been listening and very effective." Yeah, I wonder how much you, Scoots was in a, uh, influenced by Mister Rogers. Yeah, a bunch uh, for sure. Uh, Katie says, uh, you know, I've had trouble troubleshooting for eight years, uh, tried a different OTC and other things. And thanks to George and Karen, I found my way to this podcast. Thank you. Uh, Maggie says, uh, like, uh, love Scoots and Ray. And uh, they're uh, uh, slowly on the road to recovery, and the podcast is helping with that. Thank you. That's uh, awesome. Uh, Chelsea says I love the podcast and it helps. Uh, Ruth loves the mystery bard. Uh, Yasmin uh, did not like the podcast. Yeah, uh, Daly didn't know. Uh, so yeah, just a b- bunch of different things. So you can comment in the uh, cast box too. Uh, so thank you everybody for taking the time to, to comment on the show. The sleeping actually grows. Uh, Almost all our growth is because the listeners just naturally spreading the word in your own community, whether it's in person or online. And you you just say, hey, like if you're comfortable, that's that's the biggest thing is uh, being comfortable. Explain sleep with me, and that you listen to it. And then actually, you don't. It's I don't know if it's possible to concisely sum it up, but you. Uh, but that's actually how we grow. I guess also the difficulty of talking about the show. Uh, our, you know, our growth's always been slow and steady, not viral anyway, but uh, it makes it, I guess it's it's like uh, when you can't explain something, sometimes it makes them, somebody says, hmm, might have to check that out because I got no idea what you're talking about. Or Scoot sounds like an interesting fo- per- character. Uh, so that's how the show grows. Sleep With Me exists as a podcast from direct listener support. Uh, that's what keeps, that's the, only, the reason the show's here for you to listen to it. And that comes uh, by people directly supporting the show financially, kind of in a value for value. They're getting value out of the show, so they give a financial value back. Um, Patreon, a couple other places, and then uh, people that directly support the sponsors and ideally share about it. That, that's a huge way. Thank you, everybody that does that, because uh, I'm here because of your your choice and your actions. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're a proud member of Night Vale Presents. You know, if you haven't checked out the original Night Vale, uh, welcome to Night Vale. Uh, you, get, you know, I don't know. Uh, now's the perfect time, I guess. That's what I would say. You can listen to that, and you can listen to Good Morning Night Vale. You could start at the beginning. You could hop right in. Uh, but just search in your podcast app, uh, uh, the Trailblazing. I don't know if it's. In, it, I would say it's. A, can podcasts be intrepid? 
and full of wonderful, wonderful people. Holy mackerel. Uh, it was some of the most uh, supportive and encouraging people I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, produce, write, and perform on that show. So welcome to Night Vale. Check it out in your podcast app of choice. We're a proud member of Night Vale Presents. Uh, you can see everything else they're doing. Or we're, I guess uh, I'm a part of it a little bit. Uh, welcome to Night Vale. Uh, NightvalePresents.com. Confusing the brand. I got that part down. I got I got a handle on that. Uh, makes it more, not you know, easier to share when I can't share it. Uh, we're also a member of PRX. You can see everything they're doing at prx.org. And that's it. There's, but here's the thing. There's a way, way more episodes to go if you need it. I'm here. I'm queued up. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go on the flip side of this episode. Thanks.